you know everything I do is a cost you know if I make lunch then it, it costs me a couple of hours because I have to like rest afterwards you know if I go out with Pip around the block that costs me a couple of hours because I have to rest when I come back every single thing you do with ME has a cost you know because it then takes hours out of your life to like recover from and you always have to like weigh up how much you are willing to like spend in terms of like the cost of these things because we don't have much energy so that takes the energy cost and then takes cost out of the hours in your life to rest for to recover from so that it doesn't take more out of your your life in terms of crash days because I've now just lost days from my life in in terms of a crash see what I mean about how hard it is to balance this god awful condition and this is why it really grates my cheese when people say oh are you just a bit tired Hey folks, it's Finn. Welcome back, lovely people. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out one of my videos today and spend time with me. And if you're watching for the very first time, then thank you so much for choosing one of my videos. I'm going to be wiggling around and trying not to rub my bum because <laughs> I just had my libido jab this morning and it's a bit sore. But that's not what this video is about. I just made this for Pip to come and lie down and he's gone and got on his bed. <laughs> Pip, don't you want to come and show people your gorgeous face? You've been a bit sulky today. I know the feeling. Between my sore bum and what I'm going to talk about today, I'm feeling a bit grumpy as well. Pip, do you not want to come and say hello? Oh, well, apparently not. Anyway, okay. Right, so today's video... What's the matter? Are you feeling grumpy? I'm feeling grumpy as well, but I'm still here talking to people. Can you not be grumpy and be here as well? Can you not do two things at once? Daddy can do two things at once. I'm grumpy, I'm still here. Come on, come on. How about I get you a treat? Would you come here for a treat? Hang on, come on then. Right, turn around, show people your bow tie. That was a sp we do it again, spin, spin. Yes, good boy. People see a lovely bow tie because it's almost Valentine's Day and it is LGBT History Month. So look at his lovely bow tie. Good boy, yes, Paul. Yes, good boy. Lovely, can you do another spin? Can you do another spin? Spin, spin. <laughs> good boy, right, now come over here and lie down. Lie down, lie down, all the way. Good boy. There we go. Right, now you stay there and I've got a puppy nap while Daddy talks to people again. Right. Good boy. No, he doesn't want to be there today. Okay, so today's video, I wanted to do a bit of a catch up. I know today's video was supposed to be about Pip, but it was supposed to be because we've just actually celebrated his first year with us. It's his, it was his gotcha day on the... 4th February so we've had him an entire year and I really wanted to do a video about how it's been having him and just celebrate all things Pip and that video is coming but I've had a really big crash an ME crash so this that's what this week's video is about it's about having a huge crash I crashed on Sunday and it's now Wednesday I'm not quite sure where the days have gone and the only reason I'm dressed today is because I had to go out this morning and have my libido jab. Otherwise I wouldn't have got dressed. Um, it's been really nasty. It's been the worst crash I've had for a while. And I wanted to check in and, and just share it really. So that's why this video is today and not the PIP video. Um, and it's definitely in response, I think, to... The swimming. There's going to be a lot of ums and ahs in this video because I'm still not firing on all cylinders and I've got really bad brain fog and I'm just all over the place. So what I want to talk about is something called rolling PEM. So post-exertional malaise is where you do something that's over your energy envelope, over your energy capabilities. It can be the smallest thing. You know, we're not talking like going for a run here. We're talking like you can have a shower, go for a, a small like outing and you can experience then a flare up in symptoms, fatigue, headache, palpitations, breathlessness, whatever your symptoms are. 
that's what happens. So after the event, sometimes it happens immediately afterwards for other people, they experience a delay in this. For me, it's usually 12 to 24 hours after an event, I'll experience a huge like crash and it's awful. I mean, a, a post-exertional malaise crash is awful. You feel like you're dying. There's no, that's no exaggeration. Ask anyone. You can't breathe properly. You can't think properly. It feels like your whole body is shutting down. You can't move. I experience palpitations, migraine. I break out in like awful like boils and everything. Like shaking, dizziness, worse dizziness than I normally get with my pots. It's just horrendous and that can last. Usually for me it's about a week. Sometimes it can be two weeks, most of the time it's just a week and they're horrible and I don't get them quite as much as I used to now that I pace better than I once did. Um, that's post-exertional malaise. Now, did I say this to you or did I say this on, I might have said this on, no I did say this in last, last week's video. So after the swimming, I had a really quiet week, I was feeling low energy and fatigued, but not crash fatigue. I hadn't gone into a crash, but I could really feel that it wouldn't have taken much to put me into a crash, so I was being very, very careful. But I was really pleased that as the week went on, I was knowing sh sh sorry, showing no signs of a crash. Yay. So swimming was looking good, but certainly not something I should repeat very quickly, but at the same time, also no crash. So it came to the weekend and as I'd rested and was doing okay, Saturday I felt fine. So me and Chris decided to just go for a little roll and a stroll with Pip. So me in my wheelchair and we just literally went, I, we, I think we were out for about maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, just on a tarmac road path along Plymouth. Not for very long, nothing strenuous. Stopped for a coffee and a cake, absolutely fine. Came home and then later that evening I started to get like the telltale signs, bit of a sore throat, bit of a muggy head. And then woke up Sunday morning and just felt like death, absolute death. And it just got worse and worse. Monday came, was awful. And it was clear I was in a complete crash. And I've been in a complete crash since, Pip's proper staring at me. And it's only today I'm starting to lift out of it. I can tell I'm lifting out of it because I've got that real jittery, tired and wired feeling where I'm kind of starting to lift out of it. Um, and yeah, it's got me thinking about what's gone on. And I heard this phenomenon a while back and I'm trying to make sense of it in my own life. And I can see patterns of when it's happened. And it's a phenomenon called rolling PEM. And bear with me while I try and kind of explain it. So it, it's when you don't experience post-exertional malaise, PEM, straight away, but you, or, or a delayed state, like you normally would like 12 to 72 hours later, but like you get it much later on. It's when you don't quite rest enough or recover enough after event, after an event, but also you don't crash after that event, but because you're not recovering enough or resting enough, it keeps rolling over and then you do something and then you crash. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but basically it's like your post-exertional malaise doesn't get activated enough at the time because you rest a little bit and you recover a little bit, but not quite enough. So it just adds up a little bit and a little bit at a time. And then later on down the line, when you think you're fine, suddenly you crash and you don't know why. And that's rolling PEM. And I've seen this happen a few times with me where I've done something, I've rested, and then out of the blue, at seeming a tiny trigger that wouldn't normally cause me post-exertion malaise has tipped me over the edge into a massive crash. And I think this is for me, rolling PEM, where I haven't rested enough. So for example, last week with the swimming, I rested all week and thinking like I could see I was low energy, 
but I was okay. I was still resting enough, and I just thought that maybe, you know, I just needed to just have a longer rest break that week, and it was just, I was low energy, but that was made sense because I was swimming and I'll be all right. But maybe I hadn't rested enough so that then when I did the Saturday little outing, even though it was little, and normally that kind of event wouldn't trigger post exertion malaise for me, because I hadn't rested enough for the big thing that had been swimming, that little event, the outing with Pip and Chris, tipped me into post exertion malaise, but it was rolling post exertion malaise. Is this making sense? And if I look back at the times that this has happened for me, it's been when I've done something out of the ordinary that's not my normal baseline. So for me, normally going like a half an hour, 45 minutes on a tarmac path on my wheelchair wouldn't tip me into post-exertional malaise. I know that is my energy limit. It's fine. You know, I know that different paths will trigger my post-exertional malaise. If we're going like on a country path where it's more bumpy and I've got to concentrate more, that's why, where I can get triggered sometimes. You know, it, it uses more energy. I know very well by now how long I can go out in my wheelchair, what different types of wheelchair rides will affect me. And that, that what we did on Saturday, there's no way that would normally affect me to the extent it has done. So it makes sense that it would be this rolling PEM in not resting enough because swimming obviously took it out of me far more than I realised. And even though I felt I rested, I clearly didn't rest enough. So my PEM rolled over. Did I explain that enough? So yeah, it's just something I'm going to have to be very aware of because I've done a lot already in January. In one month, you know, I've been out a couple of times on my own on a bus. Well, three times now on my own on a bus, once all the way to town, you know, to a group on my own. And that's a, that's a big thing. It's like all of this is very new in terms of my energy envelope, you know, finding out my new energy levels around this new stuff. My anxiety is also getting triggered around all of this new stuff as well. So this is a lot for me to now get reused to. And, you know, I've got to take all that into account. I've also got to constantly now relook at the cost of all of these things. Like swimming, for example, might be, I mean, I always knew this with swimming because any exercise with ME is always going to be risky, which is why with swimming, I've got to mainly float. But it could be that swimming is the one that's got to be off the table. It might just be too much. Now we went for an hour. Maybe that's just too much. Maybe next time it's half an hour or maybe swimming is just too much, you know, because if it's got to be that I've got to like do complete deep rest for an entire week and not move. Is that too much of a cost just for like half an hour floating to then lose a week of my life and not be able to do anything? Is that worth the cost? Like with everything I do, I have to like have a day's rest at least before and then after. And that's how much it will cost me. You know, everything I do is a cost, you know. If I make lunch, then it costs me a couple of hours because I have to like rest afterwards. You know, if I go out with Pip around the block, that costs me a couple of hours because I have to rest when I come back. Every single thing you do with ME has a cost, you know, because it then takes hours out of your life to like recover from. And you always have to like weigh up how much you are willing to like spend in terms of like the cost of these things because we don't have much energy so that takes the energy cost and then takes cost out of the hours in your life to rest for, to recover from, so that it doesn't take more out of your, your life in terms of crash days. Because I've now just lost days from my life in, in terms of a crash. See what I mean about how hard it is to balance this god awful condition. And this is why it really grates my cheese when people say, oh, are you just a bit tired? This condition is not about fatigue. Fatigue is a huge part of it, yes, but it's far, far more than fatigue. You know, the symptoms that come with this condition are just absolutely crippling, you know. It's it's absolutely awful to manage, it really is. So, unfortunately, this week I've had to cancel my second group that I was looking to attend, the Pain Cafe. Couldn't manage that on Tuesday at all. Um, a bit sad about that, but 
that's just the way it has to go right now, isn't it? I um, I can't help that at all. Um, so yeah, that's where I am with the new year plan so far. It's always going to be <laughs> tricky starting something new like this. I've got to just rest now. There's no other group now until March, so it's just rest. I have my birthday next week, so it's rest, rest, rest this week, so I can enjoy my birthday next week. There would, would normally be a group I would attend next week, it's on my birthday, but I'm going to be spending my birthday with Chris instead, so the next group will be in March. And I probably won't go swimming again now till March anyway, so it's just really softly, softly, slow, slow with this um, new plan of mine at the moment and patience and try and let go of any frustration and just keep a note of all of this and try again and bear in mind this rolling PEM so next time I'm feeling this really low energy but I haven't crashed to bear in mind that that might be what's happening that it might be rolling PEM and just to stop everything and really deep rest just in case it is because although I felt fine on Saturday when I went out, I clearly wasn't, was I? So, yeah, thank goodness that Pip is really in line with me because he's just rested with me, really. So, yes, that's it from us this week. Pip's come back up to say hello. You going to stand? Stand. Good boy. You're going to come this way. Turn around. Good boy. Look, I want people to see your lovely bow tie. Do a kiss. Right, look, come, come here, turn around, but right, sit and face, <laughs> come here, right, sit, sit, wait, wait, let me sort this out, right, come up and look, there we go, you can see his beautiful bow tie now, lovely, good boy, yes, can you do a high five, high five, wait, high five, yes, good boy, good boy, right, that is it from me this week. Thank you so much for checking in. There will be his video, I promise. I have lots of clips and <laughs> I want to do a big celebratory video of having a year of this gorgeous boy in my life who is just my absolute world, aren't you? Yes, you are. Thank goodness for him because crashing when you have this in your life makes it all okay, doesn't it? yes it does so yeah thanks for listening everybody thanks for watching everybody thanks for spending time with me and i will catch up with you soon much love <laughs> from us he's so soft i tell you what it's just the softest thing in the world both externally and internally aren't you yes much love everybody take care of yourselves chat soon <laughs>